Hey, today I want to show you guys how to animate a face, specifically how to lip sync a face. Now this is software agnostic, you can use Maya, Blender, Cinema 4D, whatever, and you can even use any face rig you want, because I'm really just going to be talking about my workflow. Now if you don't have a face rig and you want to make one, check out my previous video where I show you how to make, not this specific rig, but a very similar rig set up exactly the same way. Now just a quick tour of this rig, it's got some simple face controls for the mouth, he can look around, he can open and close his eyes, move his eyebrows up and down, and then over here I've got the phonemes, which are just kind of like the major mouth shapes that your mouth makes when you're talking. Then if I open up my shape editor, you can see I actually have a lot more blend shapes in here that I don't have set to keyframes, but I may end up using these by the end as well, just for more control. But once again, you don't have to have your face rig set up this way. It could be set up with facts. Maybe it's not blend shapes, maybe it's joint driven. It's really more about the workflow and the way I break down and go about animating a lip sync animation. Okay, first let's check out the sound clip, and it actually comes from the Old Hammer Fiction Podcast, which is excellent. You should listen to it if you're into Warhammer. I've just taken a really cool quote, and I pitched it down to make it sound, you know, extra chaosy. I hear hell has touched the earth, and men may aspire to godhood. Here we can become masters of our own destiny. I have dreamed about making my way to the uttermost north, to the Black Gate. I will stand before Great Corn, and he will grant me power. We will return and claim my inheritance from the brothers who ousted me. Pretty awesome, right? Definitely go check out that podcast. All right, so the first thing I do is get the audio onto the timeline, and then I just keyframe the jaw moving up and down for all the major syllables. And claim my inheritance from the brothers who ousted me. I don't come from an animation background, so I don't know if this is the way everyone else does it. Some people might animate straight through, just pose by pose. But I find that I get better results when I try to break it down. So I'm just going through and animating the jaw, opening and closing. Um, one tip is you don't have to actually animate the jaw moving for every single syllable, and you don't have to move it as much as you might think. I remember when I was a little kid in school, we learned about syllables by putting our hand on our chin and speaking and then counting how many times our hand went up and down. But if you do it that way, you tend to exaggerate to try to count the syllables, but a much better way to do this is to look in a mirror and act out the line of dialogue for yourself and just watch the way your chin moves. Or better yet, if you're using a quote from a movie, just watch the scene from the movie and you'll be surprised at how subtle the character's mouth animation is. I mean, unless they're screaming or something. So don't get too attached to what you're doing here because you're probably going to be reducing some of the animation keyframes and you're probably going to be adding some more if you go too subtle. That's kind of my problem, is I usually go too subtle. Okay, and once I'm happy with the way the jaw is moving, I go through and I animate each phoneme one at a time for the entire timeline. Once again, people's mouths don't move in this robotic, sort of formulaic way, but there's a few important mouth shapes that you have to nail, or your lip sync will just not work. The ones that I find to be most important for a convincing animation are the ones where your lips are closed, like the letter M, or the letter B, or P. But if you think of other letters like the letter T, sometimes your teeth are touching and sometimes they're not. So when I was animating the jaw, I was taking extra special care to make sure that on the M, B, and P syllables, the mouth was all the way closed so that I could nail those mouth shapes. So now here you can see I've been animating the M shape for the entire timeline. Anytime he says the letter M, I'm just gonna turn that shape on. Another quick tip is you don't have to turn the blend shape all the way on. That usually looks a little bit too robotic or maybe too crazy because the blend shapes are really extreme. So I find that if I keyframe them about half on, as long as it looks convincing, I don't go any higher than that at first because I want somewhere to go if the dialogue becomes more emotional or more extreme or more angry. I don't want the baseline dialogue to be maxed out so he's got like full on crazy facial expressions because then there's nowhere to go from there and you can't really enhance the emotion later on. Okay, next it looks like I'm doing the F and the V, which is kind of the same shape, it's similar enough that I've only made a single blend shape for it. So every time on the timeline that he says V or F, I'm going to turn that shape on. Now lip syncing animation, especially when you do it this way, it's one of those things where it doesn't look good until the very end, and the whole time you're just questioning whether or not it's going to turn out. Here hell has touched the earth, and men may aspire to godhood. But just keep pushing through and keep keyframing all the different mouth shapes until you have something on the timeline for the entire dialogue. Because I find personally that it's much easier to fix bad animation than to actually animate. So I just want to get something on the canvas and I want to get him talking as quickly as possible. But obviously if you notice that the chin is doing something completely wrong at this stage, like for example if his mouth is open when you're trying to make an F or a V shape, you're going to have to 
fix the jaw animation to close it a little bit. Okay, and now that I've finished with those really important consonants, the rest of it is a little bit looser. And again, I don't come from an animation background, so maybe this is the completely wrong way to do it, but I like to be pretty loose and free with the way I animate the other sounds. So I generally group everything else into like an expansive shape and a contracting shape. Like E would be an expansive shape, like you're smiling, and then OO and, or like a W sound. Those are like contractive shapes where your mouth kind of pinches together. And I've labeled my phonemes specifically like W, E, C, H, L, stuff like that, but I'm not strict about it. Like for example, you'll notice I don't have one labeled S. Sometimes when he's making an S sound, I use the E blend shape because it just looks better. And men may aspire. May aspire. Sometimes I use the L blend shape. Here we can become masters of become masters. Sometimes I use the CH blend shape. And claim my inheritance from the brothers who ousted me. Brothers who ousted It really just depends on what the next letter in the word is, or even his emotion at the time he's saying it. So right now I'm going down the entire timeline and I'm figuring out any time I want to turn on the E blend shape. And it's not necessarily when he's saying the letter E. Again, sometimes it's T, sometimes it's S, sometimes it's even an R sound. And here's another really important tip. So for example, if he says an OO syllable, and then the next syllable is something more like an E or an A, sometimes just the act of turning off the OO blend shape will look like he's saying the next sound. Another really powerful technique is crossfading between shapes. For example, practice keyframing the word what. That blends from a contractive W shape, and as the mouth is opening and closing, it crossfades from the W to, in this case, I'm going to use the E to represent a T sound. And as the W is fading out, the T is fading in at the same time. If you're just turning one blend shape on and off before you activate the next one, your animation is going to feel really stiff and robotic. But our faces are really complex, and these seven or eight blend shapes are not enough to represent the full range of motion. So get creative, be kind of loose with it. Don't be too hung up on what these blend shapes are labeled as. Okay, so here's what it looks like with the mouth all done. I. Here hell has touched the earth, and men may aspire to godhood. Here we can become masters of our own destiny. I have dreamed about making my way to the uttermost north, to the Black Gate. I will stand before Great Corn, and he will grant me power. We will return, and claim my inheritance from the brothers who ousted me. At this point, I usually go back and make some changes if anything doesn't look right, but again, I don't get too attached to it because I tend to go back and exaggerate the mouth shape here and there, or, you know, just generally make changes to make it look more like he's not just saying the words, but delivering the lines with emotion. The first thing I usually do is just animate the head, and if this is just a practice scene, usually what I do is I either have him talking to two different people so that he can shift his focus from left to right, or I make it so that he's talking to one person, but he's kind of looking off into the distance on some line. So that's what I chose to do here. I imagine there's someone off to his right, screen left. So I'll animate the head going back and forth on certain lines, wherever it feels appropriate. And then I'll work on the eye lines and the eye contact. And the way I do this is I'll set up the camera where I think the other person is. And I try to make it so that when he's looking at the other person, he's locked into the camera. Now that's not usually where I'm going to render from. I don't want the camera to be the POV of the other person. I just use it as a way to make it feel like he's looking at the same person every time he looks over to his right. And then from there I'll start animating the eyebrows, trying to accentuate the emotions that are in this particular line of dialogue. I've got this little control for his nose so I can make him snarl. When he talks about great corn, I feel like he's kind of zoning out, like he's kind of like feeling that bloodlust that comes with worshiping the god of murder and skulls. So I gave him kind of a crazy look when he says that. And then, of course, at the end, he's really angry about his brothers ousting him, so give him this crazy look. I didn't really want to do a full body animation for this video, but the fact that he's not moving around just kind of felt stiff and robotic. So I sort of made him lean in and turn his body when he turns and that sort of thing. It didn't really end up looking great. I still feel like it, it looks robotic, but it doesn't feel like he's chained down to a table anymore. And then from there, I just slapped on an HDR for some dramatic lighting, set up my camera angle, and pressed render. And here's the finished clip. Aye. Here hell has touched the earth, and men may aspire to godhood. Here we can become masters of our own destiny. I have dreamed about making my way to the uttermost north, to the Black Gate. I will stand before Great Corn, and he will grant me power. 
we will return and claim my inheritance from the brothers who ousted me. Alright, cool. So that's it. I know I usually do sort of an in-depth click-by-click tutorial, but this time I wanted to do something a little more loose and software agnostic. So let me know down in the comments if you like this sort of tutorial, or you want me to do really specific in-depth click-by-click tutorials in the future. Still trying to figure out the style for this channel. But if you like 3D animation and you want to learn more about it, check out the other videos on my channel and consider subscribing if you like it. Alright, thanks. See you later.